Hi everyone, welcome to Monday's Stay at Home Art Club. Hope you're all doing alright. Today we're going to be looking at a project called Dear Data, which was a year long drawing project by two um, information designers, whatever that is, um, Georgia Lupi and Stephanie Posovic. I think I have to say that right. Um, mm -hmm. And they collected um, da different data every week about their lives. So it might be how many people say they said hello to, how many people they say goodbye to, how many animals they saw. And they collected that data and then they made these really beautiful graphs and um, sent them to each other. And um, through doing that, they learned more about each other and they eventually became friends. Um, but their main outcome from their project was that they really enjoyed slowing down and just noticing things about their lives and they found they learned a bit more about their environment. So I thought we could have a go at something like that. Probably not something as intense as um, mapping everything for 52 weeks. That's not what we're talking about. It's going to be quite chill. We're going to do a really straightforward version. Um, if you'd like to learn more about their project, um, I've put a link to their website down below and it's worth looking on there. Um, and I also recommend there's a YouTube link to a video of them explaining their project and I recommend you watch that before we go on. Okay, so those guys are really into their data so what they've collected is very complicated so don't worry we're not going to be asking you to do anything like that, we're going to keep it quite straightforward. Um, here's some examples of their postcards. Um, I recommend having a wee pause and having a, a wee read through them because um, initially it is a bit like, whoa, what is that? Um, but actually when you break it down, um, it's quite relatable and um, quite fun to look at really. Um, so have, have a wee nosy. So some of my favourite ones there were the ones, the little triangles um, with the, the different kinds of food they're eating and um, how much they liked it. I thought that was quite fun. It was good they're eating mostly food they liked. Um, I also really liked the layout of the one which was complaining um, with all the nice wavy lines making it look like a beautiful flower. Um, so have a wee look and if there was any style of graph that you really liked, um, have a wee think about that. Here's one that um, someone else has made, which is a bit more straightforward as well, and the text is a bit bigger, so it's easier to read. Have a look at this one. Alright, so hopefully we're not feeling too intimidated by that. I promise you we're going to make it nice and straightforward. Um, so in the next few slides I've got, I've written down some ideas for things we could think about collecting data on. Um, so I've kind of broken it down. Um, so there's one that you could maybe do during your government mandated walk or the next time you go to the shops. Um, or there's ones you could do over the course of a day or longer than that, maybe two days, three days. I maybe wouldn't start with a week because that's quite a big commitment. Um, so have a look at those, see if any of them click with you. So the only thing I would say about starting a project like this is that we don't want to be putting any 
undue pressure on ourselves. So I would maybe advise um, not doing anything around food um, because that can be quite a, an emotive issue for people um, and sometimes it isn't good to be really looking and quantifying the types of foods we're eating, if, especially if you have had issues with eating in the past. Um, also, similarly, exercise, that can be a bit of a, a flaring up area for people and um, there's a lot of guilt around that. So maybe we don't want to be writing down how much or how little we're doing with that in any anything else like that, anything you're really pressuring yourself to do, I wouldn't recommend for doing this exercise with. So let's try and pick something quite light, something quite fluffy um, and whatever is really going to work for you. Um, I think some particularly nice ones to do are um, writing down every time you think about somebody and um, maybe writing down who they are and um, what you're thinking. Is it something you're like, oh I should tell them that, they'd really enjoy that or is it oh, I wonder how so-and-so is getting on, because that can be really nice um, to tell them later. It's really nice um, to know that somebody's been thinking about you, um, so that's a nice thing you can do for people. Um, another one that I like to do is see how many people I can get to smile at me um, when I'm going for a walk, because I like to smile at people as I walk by, um, and I count how many people I can smile at and how many people smile back. Um, I don't do lots of, like, creepy smiling. I keep it, it's quite a chill level. Uh, so we're going to do that one. Keep it chill. So there's some advice um, from the two women that did this project um, about the things to think about when you are collecting your data and kind of maybe other extra things you want to write down, like how you're feeling, the time of day, um, what your reaction is. Um, and I've copied and pasted that into the, into the more info section, so I do recommend giving that a read. Alright, so it's a different day now and I've been noticing and collecting my data. So here's a picture of what I first had my notes. So, very messy, bit all over the place. Um, so I would recommend when you're collecting your data, collect it on one bit of paper, which is not going to be the one that you're going to do all your lovely charts on. Have a messy one. And then one that we can kind of think it through on. Um, so I did three different data sets there. So I, the first one I kept track of was all the drinks I had had and when I'd had them. And the other one I did was what podcasts I was listening to and for how long. And the last one was what birds I saw out the window when I looked each at each hour. Um, I just did three so I was covering my back a bit just in case one of them I couldn't make into a graph. Um, so the one I've gone for is what I drunk. So once I collected all my data I then wrote it out in a more neat manner like this. So as you can see here I've got my drink types of drinks down the side. I've then got the times I had them spaced out over three days. So I've got Friday then a line, Saturday then a line and then Sunday. I've then given each of the drinks a colour because um, that will make my graph a bit easier and I've counted up the number total of these drinks I had over the day so I had 14 water, 8 coffee, 2 iced coffee, 9 juice, um, 1 salad dressing <laughs> don't ask, um, 1 herbal tea and 2 lemonades um, there was probably some other data I could have collected at that point. I could have been why I had the drink, how I was feeling about the drink, how nice the drink was, how much I liked it, but I've kept it nice and simple for this example. I've been using colour to tell them apart, but you could be using little pictures, little symbols, words, anything that kind of comes to mind really. So now we've got our information, now we want to make it into a lovely drawing. Um, so I'm going to show you three different types of drawing you can do, but also feel free to make up your own because I'm sure you've got some great ideas and just remember it doesn't really matter if anyone else can read it, it's mostly for you. So the most straightforward one I think is kind of doing a bar chart style thing. Um, so this is my bar chart style one. 
bringing it in. So I've split up my paper into different sections of time. So I've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday going along the way. And I've then divided that. So this is eight o'clock in the morning. This is 12 noon and this is 8 p.m. And then I've put in a different coloured squiggle for different drinks when I had them. So that's quite a nice, really straightforward way to do that. So for example, on Saturday morning, I had some coffee at 8.15. So at 8, just by 8, I would put a brown squiggle. 8.15. I also had some water at 8.15. So I'm going to do a blue squiggle on top of that as well. I'm kind of overlapping mine a bit. I had another coffee at 9.30, so this is 9.30. It's just rough. It's not exactly, exactly 100% right there. But that's okay. I had another one at 9.30, water, 10, water, 10. Oh, I was drinking lots of water today at 1 p.m. That's me got all my water in. So, just pop putting them in where you can see them, if that makes sense. The next one I've done is this circle chart. And this hasn't put in any of our times at all. I've just gone for which ones have you drunk the most. So I've got my two ones that were just one in the middle with their colours. The next two, I had two of those, they're twice as big. These ones much bigger again and this one is my water so I've just gone just added up which ones I've seen which ones I've drunk the most of which ones I've drunk the least of and then drawn shapes either big for the ones I drank the most of or small for the ones I drank the least of um, it's not 100% but it's a bit, quite a nice clear official representation of what what was going on that day We've got my favourite one last, which is these star diagrams. So it's a bit like a clock. Um, and I've put in a line of a colour corresponding to the drink when I had it. Um, now, unfortunately, because I did it over 24 hours, I had to make up my own times on this clock. So it's got a slightly different representation of time from what you're, you would normally think. Um, so my starts at 8 o'clock, goes to 12 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and then around 8 o'clock, and then this is just miscellaneous evening time. Um, so it doesn't need to be super accurate or mathematical. So this is my Friday here. Um, so if I was going to be doing my Saturday on another one, I'd be doing, I'll show you a wee timeline. there's my three finished diagrams and um, you can make up your own or try out one of these and um, my favorite one to do is this one um, and if you do if you say you've got a watch or something and if you copy your watch that's a really nice way to do that one I, that's my favorite um, I think this one is probably the most straightforward one to do um, if you want to have a go at that and this one it's just quite fun so I hope you have fun just focusing and maybe noticing something about your day um, and then trying to work out how to translate that into an image. Um, it's quite a fun challenge and um, see how you get on. Alright guys, I hope you can enjoy that. Even if you don't do it, it's quite interesting to look at that project. Um, and even if you don't want to do the drawing, you can maybe do the noticing or you could just do a drawing, whatever. Um, I hope, uh, well, well, joke, okay, so today's joke is, why do bees hum? Because they don't know the words. <laughs> okay, well, I hope you can all enjoy this blistering sunshine. Um, yep, yeah. stay safe. Bye.